Hey Trekland, it's Dr. Trek Larry Nemechek back again and I am so thrilled to actually make it up the pike and you should do this too if you're here in SoCal or mid-California. Get to Santa Barbara, or actually go Lita, to the campus of UC Santa Barbara. Through April 30th this year, there's an incredible exhibit that's been expanded and extended to honor the work of Oscar winner and Mr. Star Trek makeup, Mike Westmore, good friend of mine. Um, and we're lucky enough to catch him here today before a public walking tour giving us our own personal tour. So in case you can't make it to Santa Barbara, here's some great highlights. And I don't care how in-depth you've been with your Star Trek backgrounding guys, how much, how much of a deep diver you've been. Um, there's some really cool pieces here in the exhibit that I've never seen before. Um, but enough about that. Let's go find Mike. Here we are. And... There's Hi. Mr. Westmore. Hi. Hi. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Art, Design, and Architecture Museum on the campus at the University of California, Santa Barbara, where I graduated from in 1961. I was going to say, that was the one piece that I had somehow overlooked. So this is your alma mater, which is why they're especially yes. interested here. So this is a, it's a small space physically, this part of the museum, but there's a ton of display material here. And, and I've got you here, obviously, the show wall here with... Yes, with a lot of the hands. The, um, it was, the known and not so well known. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, these these are ones we picked out that I'm sure so many of the uh, the Trekkies and fans of Star Trek are familiar with. Uh, you know, the Jemadar, a whole Jemadar head put together. Um, the uh, lizards from Voyage or Enterprise. Um, and and uh, Ferengis. Yep. And you'll, you'll, you'll be familiar. Galaxian down there. There's yes, yes. Yeah. Um, but then the ones that we see it never got names, but I always love the makeup crew names like the Tailhead and. Uh... Well, it, it, it kind of <laughs> came out. What was interesting too is this whole head here. I know uh, one time we had somebody complain about, it, so we had to take it all apart and weigh it, and it only weighed one pound. So it wasn't. Oh. It. But we tried to, you know, when they worked when they were walking down the promenade on Deep Space Nine, we would take and pin this over their shoulder, or pin it to them. Yeah. Uh, again, this is one of the ones that uh, Mark Major wore a lot. Mark was uh, uh, one that any time we had doubt of who was going to wear it, whether it was going to be a dead body or a Borg, call Mark Major. <laughs> well, there's, and then you had like an army of those people that you knew the, the pieces fit certain people yes. and come back and certain people specialized. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's let's I want to let's walk over there to the because there there okay. is an, an awful lot here. We can okay. talk about all of this and if people make some of the public events. But it's interesting how they curated this to uh, have a lot of information for folks. And, yeah, and there's uh, just lots of little and, pieces and things that were yeah. little put together. And the thing is, I had so much more that we could probably expand it a room <laughs> ten times the size right. and put things into it. This is one of the original scripts. And I literally have a copy of every single of strip in the television series. I have them all packed away. There's over 600 of them. Now, they've got this set up here to kind of interpret a flow. So this is yeah. set up to show people what you start with. This is just right. For, and I would receive one, I receive one of these every week. Right. And I'd right. have to not only be laying this out, for I would have post-production on a show we just shot. I would have the movies. I would have games that they were... Uh, filming at the time. Oh, right. So, uh, and exhibits to put together like this that would go on the road that literally showed all over the world while we were right. filming Star Trek. The tour shows, the experience, the, like you said, the video games. And, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Now, here's, here's one that I'd always heard about, but I had not actually seen yeah. in the flesh. This, um, uh, we have our Sulaban and found this cover on Scientific America. Right. And Rick Berman says, that's the skin tone I want to have on it. Well, we did everything. We tried to sculpt it. We spent about a week trying to duplicate this. Uh -huh. And finally, what worked, because I was looking at it really close and studying, studying it, and a light bulb went on, which is how it always seemed to work <laughs> at Star Trek. And I went to a model train store, and I found that mold that the little rocks that are next to the train track mm -hmm. were, uh, and it was, it was a flat mold, so we were able to make a silicone mold off that, brush hot clay onto it, and literally peel it off. We would take and first lay a, a layer of clay over the entire face, a neck, hands, uh, pieces of the body, 
and then we would take these sheets and overlay them and we could do it very quickly yeah as opposed to our first thought was oh my god it's going to take months to try to do this so that's how that happened and of course here's a little sketch and even made eyeballs made up uh, the the uh, the the lady that paints all the eyeballs took and, and did that made all those little dots mm -hmm. so that when they opened their eyes they uh, had the same look in their eyeballs that they had on their skin. But again, letting people know how things yeah. develop. And speak of the tail head. There's a, that was the first sketch. Of course, once we started to make it, this became much larger and everything. Yeah. You know, and this is one, this is just, I would, when we finally got into Enterprise, that I would do maybe 10 sketches on every show uh, to take them direct to say, you know, what do you like? And it, right. he, he would pick one out. It became um, more of a, the creative process almost on Enterprise than it did some of the other shows. Because with the other ones, I kind of like came up with an idea and we went with it. I, yeah. I didn't have any research. When DS9 exploded, especially, right? Yes, on yeah. DS9, especially down the promenade and everything. Yeah. You know, new aliens, we need new show, new That's aliens. Right. Well, we had, had nine of them <laughs> right away for the promenade, Morn being one of them. He just happened to be selected. And yeah. the director said, You sit at the bar. And he sat there for the next seven years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Now here's a familiar face. Here's Rene Auberginois. There, and, and the whole purpose of trying to totally do away with any detail on his skin. Uh, it started off by making a little piece like this, and then I went to a little bigger piece as we were doing makeup yeah. tests. Come to find out nothing really worked because he would have areas of his skin that would show through. So it finally became a full mask of which had to be applied yeah. every day and removed. Yeah. Here's a call sheet. This now, the the bath. This, bath this is what a lot of people have yeah. become familiar with. The call, the sheet. call sheets. Okay, and right. It lays out everything here of what needs to be done right. for the day. for every for all crews everything. Yep. And your end of it turns into. Then I would make this up every night. I love your telling time, everybody what uh, time they had to be in, exactly what they were going these to do, your artists, whether it was one, right. two. Yes, these are all the and what they're artists. doing. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we lived and died by right. that. And this is for the finale. Yes. Yep. But again, giving everybody a sense of what it is, mm -hmm. and then and then actually back to the standards <laughs> when they now, when they weren't a brand new one. These, uh, which I sketched up, were literally pinned to the walls anywhere right. where the makeup artists were working, because this was the Bible on how a Vulcan hairline should be, as far as the hairdressers knew. Here's here the uh, de degrees of angle for the mm -hmm. eyebrows. Um, I have there's another one for ears, of which showed the ear points going right straight up. Uh, that's the way Spock's original ears were. So we were very careful that they wouldn't tilt at all because that kind of changed the look a bit. Well, it made them look like elves. I mean, yes. Yeah, so that's they, how the difference between a Vulcan and an elf, yeah. classic elf, is <laughs> the there? tilt, right? And, and this is the sideburn Bible, right? Which Everybody learned how to lay sideburns very quickly, and we used crepe wool. And yep. when you say lay sideburns, how about putting the laying, crepe yeah, wool? Yeah, gluing it. Gluing yeah. it. This Fake hair, basically. Yeah. Somebody Eddie. might have a little bit sideburns are a little longer, but by Wait, using this little spot right here in the ear, whatever you did, even on sometimes you'd even be able to pencil it in if it was very small. Yeah, yeah. Here's a whole selection of uh, <laughs> Vulcan or Romulan eyebrows, and these. They cost really about, uh, at that time, about $100 a pair. Uh, today it even costs more. Yep, just to have on. You know, here's Michael Dorn. Here we got that guy. His wharf. And here's his old layout for his makeup procedure. Because you're not a one-man army. You had your army of uh, people oh, I, coming in, and you always didn't, couldn't count on the same person. I right? had so. up to, I normally had a regular crew of about four people. Then it could be increased to up to 50 in them for the movies. For televisions, I think about 25 is as big as we ever got. Right. You know? Um, a so day here, in the life is uh, what this, this wing has been called, which is, yeah, pretty much your scoping here. Here was my original sketch on, on Terry Farrell's spots, of which I did Terry's um, spots 350 times and this was the little design. And it was interesting because, see, they say, why don't you use a stencil 
or do something else, and, and it didn't work. It was just much faster. I would take just a little fine uh, brush with a point mm -hmm. on it and dip it into tattoo ink and make all these little circles like this. And so actually out of the 350 times, not one time matched. <laughs> but it's so busy, you know. Now didn't you sign them a number on the And I would sign them. What I would do is like right here, there I am right here signing it on uh, Terry's neck. Right. So in Roman numerals, I would sign my initials. So where would that, on, on your template here, wound, this is at, at her neck here, Yes, right? that'd be down here, I'd sign it down here, underneath her collar. So, right. you know. Right. And now, does 350 include yeah. the time you did it at Vegas, or was that 351? That would have been 351. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> In fact, I did sign it. I was going to say, you I made, did. and you had some, cat. you had a cap or t-shirt made up for that, I yeah. guess. That yeah. was really, if people got, knew what that referred to. We had a lot of fun. Harry and I had a lot of fun. You know, we, could, right. we should take that show on the road. And there's... This is Paul Winfield. I was going to say the late great Paul Winfield. This is, I, I became so busy on Star Trek that I had to circulate continually. This is, this is just about the last full makeup that I was allowed to do. Oh. Because it took three hours, which means I couldn't go anywhere else to tell something what they were doing right or wrong and, and direct it. But uh, it, was, it was fun, and he was a great person to work with. Yeah. Neelix, <laughs> which was interesting here because... Um, Rick Berman told me, he says, I want you to make somebody cute and lovable and not dangerous. So I had just seen The Lion King, and I thought, right. hey, what about the meerkat and the boar? I'll just put them together, like I did with almost everything in Star Trek. Combine things that are familiar on Earth. And so little things like this, this is very stiff goat hair that this was made out of. Little whimsical meerkat type of eyebrows. Mm -hmm. uh, even turned him into a vegetarian, made teeth for him that weren't sharp or anything. They were kind of dull and very, very small. But a lot of biology, a lot of uh, organic, like with the rest of everybody on Star Trek, trying yeah. to take it as a jump from known science or something that made sense, and it wasn't just thrown together to look prettier. Right. I mean, the aesthetics came yeah. out, obviously. Yeah. But you guys, all, even, even what you're crafting and yeah. designing and building. But every, everything I tried to cover, I didn't want to leave anything um, that's going to show, like putting the teeth in here instead of leaving him with human teeth. And he had orange contact lenses that kind of matched up into the paint job. Uh, Scott Wheeler, wonderful makeup artist, is uh, you know applied this daily mm -hmm. to Neelix, and of course he he was great and he loved doing it too. Now, what's this uh, handwritten log? This is here? again like my battle plan. This is a book where I would list every character that we have going on. And the date. Oh, there we go. The date. Purgatory Shadow, DS9, right. Mm hmm And who's working and how many days they were going to work. And then total up the column over here. So that's your cat that's your actors over here. Mm -hmm. And who's doing what? Mm-hmm. Heavy Dax show there. I'm trying to show. And then your notes down here. Anything special that I had to do. I also had a huge calendar. This is just room. your personal log. This is my personal log. Yeah. And I had one for every season of every show. And I still have those all tucked away in boxes. And this is, uh, yeah, this is two shows at once. Yes, there was a page. So you got a Rise page. from Voyager. And there's a, there's a, <laughs> no, there's a page for each one of them. And they, they would go in sequence. There's 512, there's... 160. But I'm saying you've got DS9 over okay. here and Voyager over here. This might have been, was it, the end of one season and the beginning of another. No, I, it's it's a mid season because this was this was a sweeps. Okay. I think that's a fall sweeps. Okay, but uh, but right. But anyway, that just that yeah. puts your life and yeah. your workload and, and then the line overseas. The line through it means it's all been registered elsewhere. It's done. I don't have to go back and look done. at it anymore. Well, they're.